So my first video last year on the experiment to see if copper wire through a tomato stem would help prevent disease wasn't good enough for you guys. All right, no worries. I accept criticism. It's nothing personal. Now it's time for round two. Let's get into it. Just a quick background for those of you who might not have seen my first video experiment. The idea or myth behind putting copper wire through a tomato stem stems from the belief that it prevents disease, particularly fungal diseases. A common remedy to defeat or prevent leaf diseases on tomatoes are copper-based chemical sprays or plant fungicides. So the notion is instead of using a spray, you can use a piece of copper wire through the stem of a tomato plant and it'll do the same job, essentially creating a chemical reaction from the stem fluids and copper wire that inoculates the plant against diseases. In my first video experiment, I concluded that the copper wire made no difference to disease prevention. The reason I decided to conduct this experiment again is due to the feedback, or should I say bashing, that I got in the comments section on that last video casting doubt on whether the copper wire I used in the experiment at the time was legit, meaning people were saying that it was most likely coated in plastic. And therefore, if it was coated in plastic, it would not be able to react with the fluids in the stem of the tomato plant and hence null the experiment because it wasn't going to work anyway. So this time, I not only obtained raw copper wire, I ensured that there was no doubt the wire used in this experiment was without plastic coating. Now before you fob off this copper wire thing as crazy, let me assure you there is some credibility to it. There are people in the gardening world, particularly tomato growers, who swear by the use of copper through the tomato stem. And you know, far be it from me to condemn that or poo poo it or say it's stupid. I'm just going from my own experience and through my own experimentation. Secondly, it's normal for plants to absorb nutrients and minerals through foliage or the root system that can help them grow stronger and fight disease. So absorption via the stem isn't as far-fetched as you might think. And thirdly, scientifically, it is a possibility. My brother, Phil, happens to be a scientist and not an everyday scientist, mind you. He's been a scientist for 20 years working for the CSIRO, which is a prestigious government institute here in Australia. And he's been working in the agricultural industry, doing lots of fancy stuff. He's got a double degree, much smarter cookie than dummy here, but he's got a degree in engineering and info technology. And like I said, been a scientist for a long time. He came out and visited us the other day and he checked out the experiment. I explained to him the notion of the copper wire through the tomato stem. And you know what he said? He pondered it for a bit. And he said, you know what, Mark? There's quite a bit of weight in that. That's, there's a possibility that that could work. Mind you, I have to admit, he wasn't overly impressed with my experiment set up. But hey, I'm not in a lab. I'm not in a controlled environment here. I'm a backyard gardener just trying my best. Anyway, let's overlook my shortfalls as a scientist and let's focus on the crux of the experiment, which you probably know by now, which is basically a piece of copper wire, not plastic coated, through the stem of a tomato plant. I kept it simple and planted good, strong, healthy seedlings purchased from the nursery. That way I didn't have to raise them from seed and have any issues or any disease get into the plants right from the get-go out of the soil. These are a determinant or dwarf variety of tomato called pot prize. I planted them all in the same raised bed except for one which I planted in a random bed just to see if there are any major differences in growing between it and the group. 
Once the seedlings were around eight to 10 inches tall, I placed a piece of copper wire through half of the plants by carefully piercing the center of the stems several inches up from the base and then wrapping the wire around the stem so it would sit firmly and not fall out. I did a bit of pruning initially to tidy the plants up before inserting the copper wire, but apart from that, I left the plants alone, giving them appropriate water and fertilizer. From then on, I just kept observing them over the next three months, to the day actually, it's been three months to the day of filming this. And I just looked for disease resistance, any types of change, fruiting habits, how natural the plants grew, or if I could notice any differences or trends between plants that had the copper wire and those that didn't. One thing to note, at around the six week mark, so halfway, I sprayed the plant that I had isolated in another garden bed with some eco fungicide, which isn't unusual. I sprayed all our other plants with that fungicide as well. Of course, except for these, which I just left go on their own. So what were my findings overall? Pretty much, I thought the plants grew fairly poorly. They grew leggy. They are fruiting late. They have quite a few diseased leaves. And if I compare that to the isolated plant, which did remember get that spray of ecofungicide, the leaf diseases are more prevalent on these plants that didn't get any spray. However, all these varieties of plants, this pot prize, grew poorly this season where a lot of my other tomatoes grew really well. So I'm thinking this variety is a pretty ordinary variety anyway. Maybe not for everyone's garden, but certainly a bit ordinary for our garden. So that aside, was there any difference between the ones that got the copper wire through and the ones that didn't? Well, I can't see any difference at all. I hadn't been able to see any difference right through the whole three months. Whenever I checked out the plants, they were always very similar. One with the copper wire didn't grow poorly or as bad or any different to the one without the copper wire. And likewise, well, the ones without the copper wire didn't have any more diseased leaves than the ones with the copper wire. So as you can see here, you've got no copper wire. You can't bring it in close, but no copper wire. You can see overall and copper wire. Both plants have diseased leaves. Both plants, similar height. Both plants look similar in statue. And the kookaburras are, are laughing because they think this is a joke. But like I said, take this experiment very seriously. Settle down guys. Bottom line is there is no difference at all between either. Therefore, my conclusion is that there isn't any difference between putting some copper wire through a tomato stem or not. So I am now satisfied that I've done two experiments on this and both have come out with the same conclusion, in my mind anyway with my, I know this is anecdotal, all right? I do know that. So don't smash the hell out of me in the comment section below, but sure, put your suggestions down, give your conclusion, put your points down. Maybe you do use copper wire to great success and perhaps I'm doing it wrong, I don't know. But my conclusion is that there is no difference between the two. Therefore, I won't be using copper wire in my garden. I don't think there's a need to go through that extra trouble. And that's why I did the experiment to show you guys, to prove to myself one way or the other, that the use of copper wire is unnecessary to prevent disease in tomato plants. In fact, I think the best way, if you are in an environment that gets plenty of leaf disease and you want to do something about it, probably the best way to do it is to prune your tomato plants within reason. That never helps overly, but it helps a little. Using an eco fungicide within moderation, I think is probably the best way. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun. If you did, make sure you give it a big experimental thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and share the video around because that helps the channel out heaps. 
Looking forward to reading your comments below. Please don't smash me too much. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.